Yeah, so, so these are the four questions on Faraday's law, electromagnetic induction this week. Um, the first one, I linked to this video because uh, I think at the time I didn't have um, I, I didn't have a good uh, recorded demonstration of the effect of eddy current. So uh, watch this video. Uh, I think I do have some uh, replacement of some videos that's been recorded since then. I think I linked it from here. So among the magnet demos, yeah, eddy current demo. Oh, you know, I can probably replace it now. Um, so there's a, a demo with <laughs> all the explanations there. And I can also uh, do a demo now. I uh, brought out this thing. Uh, so this is a magnetism demo that I have in, uh, in the physics stock room. So uh, when you're in the lab, ask me if you want to see it, um, then I can show it to you. So it, the demo comes with two, uh, two of these slugs. They appear similar. Sorry, I'm trying to avoid the blurring algorithm. Um, actually, let me do, do it this way. I, I'm going to disable my background blurring for a bit so that I'm not struggling with the uh, things getting blurred. Um, so I have these two slugs. Um, they appear similar. They are about the same weight, but um, they are different in one of them. I think it's this one. One of them is just um, it, it's just a piece of iron. So when I take this, put it into this pipe thing, and drop it, it just drops through. <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, so so this is the kind of the thing that you would normally expect, and this. This is a new dimion magnet. It's a pretty strong magnet, and it can be used to show the effect of eddy current. When I drop it through this same pipe that I dropped the other piece of metal through, then what you will see is it drops very slowly through. And oh, ugh, I hope I didn't break anything in the computer. <laughs> Most of the, I, I, it's got solid state drive, so I think it should be fine. <laughs> you should be careful with the magnets and hard drive. Um, so, so the question goes to this, uh, this phenomena that when you have, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is one of those things that the best way to kind of get a sense of it is to play with it yourself. So um, ask me when you're in the lab, I'll, um, I have three of these so I can um, pass it around and have people play with it. Um, so so that's the demo you should be thinking of. And um, there are two questions that's uh, meant to separate out something. So the reason the magnet drops slowly is because of uh, the current. There's a current that's important. But when you look at for this law, this is the um, this is the statement of Faraday's law that um, line integral of electric field around the loop, or what we call induced voltage, is equal to negative of the time derivative of the magnetic flux um, through the area enclosed by the loop. When you look at this, uh, when you look at this law that gives you the electromagnetic induction, and this is my induced voltage, you should note that there isn't any material property. When you look at the magnetic flux, it just depends on the magnetic field, depends on what the neodymium magnet is doing. And this time derivative, it depends on things moving around. So how quickly is the magnet dropping? In terms of, um, so in this demo, oh yeah, I think that's why I still have to link it to this. So in this demo, he does it with uh, this uh, plastic pipe and with an aluminum pipe and uh, there's a difference in the effect. So when the magnet is uh, dropping through a plastic pipe, in terms of Faraday's law, nothing in here changes. So the dropping magnet still induces the same voltage that it always does when it's moving at a particular speed. What's different between a plastic pipe and a conducting pipe 
is the uh, how much current is induced. So uh, there, the law that's important is Ohm's law. Ohm's law says that current through some material is given by voltage difference divided by R. So in this uh, demo that you will see in the video, the voltage difference is the induced voltage. So when you have material with low resistance, it generates larger current, which produces magnetic field, which affects how uh, how quickly the magnet can move. It slows down the magnet. So, so yeah, it, it, uh, I wanted to make sure people kind of think through this and separate them out. That there's a portion, uh, there's a law that describes the induced voltage, and that induced voltage is independent. It doesn't depend on um, what kind of materials might be present. The materials that might be present are important for getting to what current is actually induced. Uh, yeah, I think that was the important thing. Uh, let's look at question two. Uh, it says the circular conducting loops shown in the figure below are <laughs> parallel to each other, oriented perpendicular to the plane of the page. When does it... Yeah, uh, so it's a... Um, yeah, um, it's a fun question, <laughs> and this uh, I, I think uh, especially once you get a sense of a question like this, and you can figure out all the directions, then you will have mastered one right hand rule, and two the Lenz's law, which is the special name that we give to a portion of Faraday's law to um, to to give us the sense of the direction that the current will be flowing. But let's just walk through this carefully. First, the right-hand rule. So when the switch is closed, uh, so when the switch is closed here, let me draw the direction of the current that's flowing. Uh, this is the positive, negative. So current is flowing in this direction. So it's going to be flowing around the loop in such a way that here comes out of the screen and here goes into the screen. Okay. So with the direction of current to mind, we should have figured out the direction of magnetic field. So I'm doing right hand row. I'm gonna use one of the short curve rule, which says that if I curl my right hand fingers in such a way, they curl in the direction of the current in a loop then direction of my thumb is the direction of the magnetic field in the center of that loop. So here, my thumb is pointing to the right from your perspective. So I should have magnetic field that's um, kind of pointed to the right as current is flowing through. And you know, if I want to be complete, this magnetic field, they kind of look through, they form something that looks like a dipole field. Um, but for this portion of the question, what's really important is the magnetic field in the center of the loop, since that will also determine the flux through D. So, um, so part A is asking what is the direction of the current induced in D? So this is uh, the statement of Lenz's law, um, or a version anyway. It says uh, the induced current is in such a direction that the magnetic field due to the current, due to induced current, opposes the original change in flux. Um, the way I like to characterize it is in Faraday's law, you have this. The, you have the induced voltage, or E dot DL, around the loop, is equal to minus of the time derivative of the magnetic flux. And this minus sign, it's, uh, uh, I forget minus signs often, <laughs> and this is the one minus sign I will never forget because it's so important and special that we gave it a name, Lenz's law. Um, so let, when you figure out the direction of the industrial current according to the, the Lenz's law uh, qualitative description, then you have uh, somehow figured out the effect of this minus sign. That's what it comes down to. So in this picture, the direction of the magnetic field that's being created by the original current that's uh, to the right 
in the uh, and it's increasing in that direction. So the current induced in D has to be such that it should be producing magnetic field that goes to the left. This will be opposing the original change of flux. So I'm just going to play with my hand a little bit. My thumb points to the left. So at the top, I should have magnetic field going into the screen. And at the bottom, I should have magnetic field coming, uh, you know, coming <laughs> out of the screen. So, so at, when the switch is closed, and as the magnetic field is increasing in this direction, the current induced in this loop should be creating these magnetic fields so that um, it opposes the change of magnetic flux. So that's the direction of the current induced in D. It, uh, so if you imagine looking at it from right, it should be flowing. Um, looking at it from right, it should be uh, uh, flowing uh, clockwise. Let me just do it from my own perspective to be sure. Yeah, it should be flowing clockwise. Yeah. <laughs> um, so B, a long time after the switch is closed. So the key is a long time after. Uh, you should uh, take that to mean uh, time long enough that any transient change, uh, transient responses have settled down. There's no nothing changing with respect to time, which means the time derivative has gone to zero. That's what a long time after means. That means there's no current induced, induced in D. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So there's no current of induced flowing in D. There's no voltage induced around D. And assuming it's not a superconductor, any current that was induced before, they decay on their own. Uh, they dissipate away their energy. So will any current flow in loop D when the switch is opened? And the answer is yes. Uh, remember, what's important is the change of magnetic flux. So after a long time, there is a magnetic flux uh, through loop D that's coming from this uh, magnetic field that's been produced as current is flowing through here. And when that magnetic field goes away, that, there, that represents a change in flux that goes, uh, so it was pointing to right, so there's a overall change in flux that's pointed to the left. So this would be my uh, delta V, B, which means according to Lenz's law, the, there's a current induced through loop D in such a way that there is a magnet induced magnetic field that will be opposing this change. So my magnetic field is pointed to the right. So, um, so the direction of the current is such that at the top, it's coming out of the screen. And at the bottom, it's going into the screen. So, so yeah, the exact opposite of part A. So there will be current induced there until the magnetic field completely goes to zero and there's no more time derivative of magnetic flux. So yeah, it's a... Uh, uh, I encourage you to try to give that detailed description, uh, which will also be in the solution. Um, it, it got to using right hand rule um, and other, all the other direction rules. Um, okay. Um, consider a bar magnet moving, moving towards a copper loop. Answer the perspective looking at the loop from top. Okay. Um, the, so let me just draw that picture. So. Uh, looking at it from top, I have my loop oriented the so. So, um, since the magnetic field kind of looks like this, you know, fields come out of the North Pole and goes into South Pole. Um, so, the kind of the portion of the magnetic field in the loop, they are pointed into the loop or pointing into the page. And as the magnetic approaches low, will the induced voltage current or current that circulates uh, clockwise or, or counterclockwise? So I'm imagining looking at it. So this is the direction of magnetic field. Now that will also be the direction of the change in magnetic flux, because as the magnet is approaching, it, its strength is getting larger. 
So with the large, so since uh, the magnetic field is increasing in the direction it's pointing in, uh, the direction of magnetic field is also the direction of change of magnetic flux, which means according to Lenz's law that I raised, the direction of uh, induced magnetic field should be opposing it. This should be the direction of magnetic field induced. So in order to induce uh, that kind of magnetic field, the current that's flowing should be going counterclockwise. You should have counterclockwise induced the current in order to, and let me just check from my perspective, um, in order to, um, in or, order to produce that uh, direction of magnetic field that's consistent with the Lenz's law. So, yeah, um, so yeah, the, so that would be yeah, counterclockwise. After the magnet passes through the loop and moves away, okay, will the induced voltage produce current? Um, let me think it through. So, the direction of magnetic field, I think after the magnet moves through, it's the same. Uh, so if I imagine magnetic being down here, south end here, north end here, with the magnetic field pointing into the south end. So one thing that su surprisingly doesn't change is the magnetic field is still pointing into the page as you're looking at it from the top. Uh, what's changing is before this magnetic field was getting stronger as the magnet is moving closer. After it's passed through, the magnetic field is getting weaker. So instead of this the, being the, the same direction being the direction of the change of magnetic flux, magnetic flux change now points in the opposite direction. It points out of the uh, page because the field is getting weaker. It's getting less in the direction it's pointing in, which means the induced magnetic field should oppose this change of flux should be getting opposed by the induced field. So the induced field will be pointing into the page. And in order to get that, uh, pointing into the page, and in order to get that, you need a clockwise current. And let me just double check for my own perspective. Yeah, clockwise current. Um, yeah, so it's uh, the... It, so after magnet passes through, the the induced voltage, it's in the opposite direction. It's in the clockwise direction. And so this is a kind of an interesting fact that after this magnetic dipole passes through, the net, um, like integral of the current that's been generated, it will integrate out to zero. So, you know, if there was a positive blip, positive being counterclockwise, and then there's a negative blip, and it, it moves in the, the kind of that function as a function of time. The current is in such a way that if you integrate over the whole time, it'll just add up to zero. Uh, that setup has been used. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what CND is getting at. Um, so I'll have you do the uh, uh, thinking through these two. Um, it, this is a, like a setup for detection of a magnetic monopole because when a magnetic dipole passes through a loop like that, it doesn't produce any lasting signal. But when a magnetic monopole does, it does. So uh, I'll have you think through these remaining two and you know, look at the answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, part C, oh, I mean, question four. Um, electromagnetic breaking can be achieved by applying a strong, yeah, because of eddy current. <laughs> yeah, breaking, it's eddy current. <laughs> it, question number one up there, uh, how does the magnetic field slow? Um, yeah. So I, I guess you you there are two different ways you can get at it. You can think of eddy current producing uh, acting as magnets themselves, and it's on like interaction between magnets. Or you can think in terms of uh, conservation of energy. So when you have eddy current flowing in a material with some electrical resistance, but small resistance, that Eddy current, um, it, it causes dual heating. It uh, turns that electrical energy, in electromagnetic energy, into heat. So um, 
so uh, there are those two different ways you can explain it, but all it, it co does come down to etiquette. <laughs> That's a um, good one here. Yeah. So, okay, those are the four questions. Um, yeah, I hope they uh, make sense in terms of what you've seen in the lecture.